now that the new year's here it's time to uh try and get a 2020 sticker on that license plate so that i can continue to drive her on the road so we need to get her into smog prep let's get going now i understand this year it's going to be a little bit more difficult because hello not the stock motor um california vehicle inspection um i think it's called bar you will uh, have the chance to be approved if the motor you put in is newer than the motor that came out. And uh, that's definitely the case here with this 98. Um, it's definitely gonna run clean, it's just the visual. Um, I took it to a place uh, two years ago that completely overlooked all of my fuel components that aren't technically California allowed. However, um, what I did have to do is take off the breather there, take off the short ram remove this and just put the stock stuff on which i still have so that's what i'm gonna do right now and voila it is now in smog prep so let's go get smogged all right just had my visit to the smog shop and um it's not gonna pass it's not gonna pass emissions so we aborted that mission for the um, information had to be sent to the state and um, I didn't want to put the guy in a bind you know he was thinking of doing some things and taking some hoses off to get the uh, the air to be a little uh, more clean coming in and things like that he said leave it with me over the night I'll adjust the idle and things like that but that's not the kind of person I am I don't want him doing illegal stuff a lot of people, part of what California does, the Bar Association does, they send decoy cars in um, to try and uh, trip up the um, mechanics into smogging them, even though they don't, they shouldn't pass visual and or didn't pass emissions either, and uh, they find them heavily. And so I wasn't about to get some bribe situation with this guy. I respect him a lot for uh, not really wanting to do it and uh, I stopped both of us from doing it. So what that means for this car is um, I'm going to retire it from the road like I should have done a long time ago. Um, even though I think California is over the top with its emissions regulations, everybody who modifies cars thinks that. I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna set the example. I'm gonna retire this thing from the road and um, I'm gonna be trailering it uh, where I wanna go which will allow me to, you know, not worry so much about this or that emission standard or whatnot or noise regulations or anything like that. I mean, every now and then on my little, you know, side road or on my driveway and stuff, I'll drive it, you know, just to test things out, but I'm not gonna take it where there's people can get hurt, you know, just, it's disappointing, but the tune in it is great. John Vega did a great job. This is nothing to do with him. Um, it would pass in Florida, no problem. But uh, it just runs and idles a little rich, richer than California allows. And so uh, it's just hydrocarbons were a little high. And so is the carbon monoxide count. It was just, it was over 1%. So that's just the way it goes. And um, you know, onto, bigger and better things for this car. I'm not getting rid of the car. I'm not selling the car. I'm just not driving it on the street like I do right now. So this is the last time it'll be on the road. So here we are at a nice flat place, way flatter than my driveway, as you can see. I'm gonna try and, uh, while I'm doing my last drive in this car on the road, I'm gonna do my um, oil check, gonna check the dipstick level and see where it's actually out on a flat surface. I don't know if you can see this in the video, it's right at the second dot, right above it. So, trying to get that so you can see it. So it's high, it's six quarts is, a little high. I'll go probably go five and a half quarts from now on.
now that I got it all back in my spec that I like to race in and have fun, I'm going to go ahead and take my oil sample now. Now we get her up to operating temp to make sure the oil circulated. Set up your containment container with the funnel in it. Make sure the funnel is clean. Midway through the oil change, grab your containment funnel and collect a sample. Close the lid tightly and then you gotta wrap it in this oil absorbent cloth and then put it in the secondary bag container and then shove it right in here and fill out the credit card information inside and ship it off. It's that simple. All right guys, I have here my Blackstone oil analysis report. They emailed it to me after they uh, finished the analysis um, because it takes so long to get it to their place. I saw the tracking, I saw it get stuck in San Jose, I saw it get stuck in my local um, city's uh, mailing place. So it's just, it just looks like a sketchy package, but it's not, it's been pre-approved. They just have to open it up and everything. So here are their notes and I'll go through the numbers. Um, Alexander, thanks for the notes. Lead is the primary bearing material in a Honda H23, and iron and copper can also be related to bearing wear. All three of these materials are much lower than universal averages for H23 engines, and that's a good thing. These averages are based on a much longer 4,900 mile oil use interval. That's way beyond what it should be. And after just 100 miles, which is what mine was, uh, metals haven't had much time to build up in this oil. Even so, there's a, if there was a serious bearing problem in the works, we'd probably be seeing at least a little bit of lead. No problems stand out in these numbers, which is super good. So on here, um, they have, look at this. this. I love this company. Look at all these metals, and they have all their results. Um, as you can see, the averages are far down here, and mine are over here. Um, some... Uh, things that I have to look at, uh, that I have looked at, but I had to look at when I first got this, was my magnesium levels, manganese levels, and boron levels. They're all much higher than average, especially magnesium. And so uh, that was about over four times uh, the normal average. Now, uh, I did some more research with them, and they gave me some info on that. Those are all oil additives. And uh, I use Castrol GTX Magnatech, um, and so that makes perfect sense, but none of that comes from the motor itself. So, uh, and they look to be doing their job. I have zero parts per million of lead, and um, the average is about four parts per million. And I'm sure if I had bearing wear, I'd have a lot more than four parts per million, even after 100 miles. So, I'm super excited. They say my oil is doing its job. So, um, I'm really stoked on that. It just sucks that um, I'm not taking it out on the road anymore. So, you know way to end the video but uh, that's the way it's gonna be so right now this is Falconator okay I lied there's one more thing I want to do in this car before I retire from the road and I've been wanting to do it since the tune is done but um, it'll be my last hurrah and uh, you'll see what that is in the next video stay tuned this is Falconator signing out